good afternoon friends i am back after a long time because there was intervening exams and all other things and some other own own issues so i think i delayed the process of talking to you about three definitions of probability uh, which i had promised and so today i do the same thing which i had promised the first comes the definition of probability given as i told you by the statistician one of my favorites rather my favorite modern statistician Dave, sir david spiegel halter from this beautiful book the art of statistics learning from data so let us see what uh, he has to say about uh, probability which is chapter 8 of this book it's called probability the language of uncertainty and variability so let us uh, see what he has to tell us about how to discuss probability theory so just you know the way statisticians usually introduce probability is a story of chevalier de mer in fact i also do that in the class telling the story of chevalier de mer in 1650s in france that is what he writes the self style chevalier de mer had a gambling problem it was not that he gambled too much, although in bracket he wrote he did, but he wanted to know which of the two games he stood the greatest chances of winning. Game one was throw a fair die at most four times and win if you get a six, win some money. So if you throw a die first, take down what has come up on the face, second, third and fourth. If one of the times six appears, then you win the game. Okay. Second game is throw two fair dice at the same time repeatedly. Maybe two people are doing what you are all doing it, right? From two in two different hands. At most twenty-four times and win if you get a double six. Which bet is better? In our minds, we might think that the second bet is better because you have more, you are giving more trials. You have two, two things and you are giving more trials. But think very, very carefully. Think very, very carefully. Is it really that? Is it really true that having 24 trials of two different coins it's two different dies. You have a better chance than the first one where you have only four throws and you want a one six, one six to come. Because here you want a double six to come, which I somehow feel intuitively slightly harder. Even if you throw the, you might think, oh, you're giving 24 times. So there's more of a chance of two six coming. But Six coming in one and something else coming in other is more probable than two six coming at the same time. That's what my intuition would be. So let, let us read on. So what I plan is that I, I do three different videos for three different definitions. Which is better? Following good empirical statistical principle, Chevalier de Mer decided to play both games numerous times and see how often he won. This is called the frequency approach to statistics or the frequentist technique, which was championed by R.A. Fisher. This took a great deal of time and effort, but in a bizarre parallel universe in which there were computers, but no probability theory, the good Chevalier, the mayor, whose actual name I, I can know from this book only, Antoine Gombeau, that would be in French, uh, but the spelling is G-O-M-B-A-U-D, and um, should have not wasted his time collecting data of his successes, because if he's losing, he's losing money also. He would simply have simulated thousands of games. So this again speaks about the modern view of using simulation as a way of figuring out what could be the chance of occurrence of certain event or figuring out something's probability. I would also take this chance to thank everyone who has commented on the first video giving their own view of probability. Some 
were very interesting to read, I would agree. Figure 8.1, which is the one in his book, where he has done the simulation himself. So in this figure that he does, he says that this figure 8.1 displays the result of such a simulation showing how overall proportion of times that he wins each game changes as he plays more and more. Although the game 2 looks better for a while, just as I told you, after around 400 games each, it becomes clear that the game 1 is better and in the very long run, he can expect to win around 52% of game 1 and only 49% of game 2. So the probabilities are already been calculated. 49 by 100 and 52 by 100, right? 0 0.49, 0 0.52. So something is more than 0 0.5 is more probable in the long run. This in the long run is a very, very key word which statisticians use. The Chevaliers rather remarkably played so often that he came to the same conclusion. Game 1 was marginally a better bet. So he was doing real physical simulation, but here in real world you do uh, computer uh, simulation. So it's the importance of figuring out probably that this, this kind of historical simulation is also done even to find, uh, you know, stock prices which are random in a market. So the Chevalier, the Chevalier rather remarkably played so often that he came to the same conclusion. Game 1 was marginally a better bet. This went against his erroneous attempts at calculating the chances of winning and so he turned to the fashionable Mercenaire Salon in Paris for help. Fortunately, the philosopher Blaise Pascal he turned to the fashionable Mercenaire Salon in Paris for help. Fortunately, the philosopher Blaise Pascal, who is also a mathematician known for Pascal Triangle, was also a member of the Salon and who, that means Pascal, in turn wrote to his friend Pierre de Fama of the Fama's Last Theorem about the problems presented by Chevalier and together they developed the first steps in probability theory. The one you know that the, if I have n number of all possible chances and you have to have, uh, you know, the number of cases of whatever the number of cases are favorable to you, you divide the number of favorable cases by all possible cases to get your probability. This is the essentially the frequentist approach. But there are issues with this for which we have to go to Kolmogorov axioms, which we are treated. Despite the fact for millennia, humans have gambled on the way bits of bone or dice would turn up when thrown. The formal theory of probability is a comparatively recent idea. After Pascal and Farmer's work in 1650s, the mathematical essentials were sorted out in the next 50 years or so. And now probability has applications in physics, insurance, pensions, financial trading, forecasting, and of course gambling, right? But why do we need to use probability theory when doing statistics, that is understanding data? We have already seen the concept of data points being picked at random from, picked at random is in comma, picked at random from a population distribution. The friend with low birth weight in chapter 3 was our first introduction to probability. We have to assume that anyone in the population is equally likely to be chosen to be a part of our sample. Oh. Remember Gallup's analogy of stirring the soup well before testing so that all gradients are mixed nicely so that you can really get the real test of the soup. And we have seen that if you want to make statistical inferences about the unknown aspects of the world, including making predictions or forecasts, then our conclusions will always have some uncertainty attached to them. And again, I'm reading, please listen to this. 
and we have seen that if we want to make statistical inferences means drawing conclusions about certain things about which we really don't have idea about unknown aspects of the world including making predictions of forecasts like weather forecast which goes so wrong so most of the time then our conclusions will always have some uncertainty attached to them quantum mechanics in physics completely depends on probability theory because of the real, real natural world seems to behave in absolutely a random fashion in in the last chapter we you saw the use of bootstrapping of okay there is a kind of he 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 write he writes about certain things which we have not uh, we have not discussed so i'm not discussing this part now let us see how, how a statistics course is now a modern statistics course is taught traditionally a statistics course would start with probability which is the way i also teach i am teaching my current course applied probability and statistics and that is how i have always begun when teaching in cambridge that is what professor speaker holder writes and even if you see his 14 lecture series 14 lectures in the african institute of mathematical sciences there also he starts with probability and goes into statistics but this rather mathematical initiation can be an app obstruction to grasping the all important ideas in the preceding chapters that do not require an understanding of probability theory or how to handle data in contrast this book is what would be called a new wave in statistics teaching in which formal probability theory as a basis for statistical inference does not come in come in till much later we have seen that computer simulation is a very powerful tool for both exploring possible future events and bootstrapping historical data which is used in finance but it is a but it is a rather clumsy and brute force way of carrying out statistical analysis this just simulation and bootstrapping so although we have got a long way we have got a long way while avoiding formal probability theory it is time to face up the vital role in providing the language of uncertainty so unless you really need you know to introduce probability theory into statistics modern statistical teaching what he advises should be the otherwise trying to do more of simulation bootstrapping and all those techniques and then when you think that okay you cannot do anything further with them you really start using statistical tools or um, probabilistic tools rather but why the reluctance to use this brilliant theory developed over the last 350 years i am often asked why people tend to find probability a difficult and unintuitive idea and i reply that after 40 years of teaching in this area i finally concluded that it is because probability is a difficult and unintuitive idea i have sympathy for anyone who finds probability tricky even after my decades as a statistician when a basic school question using probability i have to go away sit in silence with pen and paper try in a few ways and finally announce what i hope is the correct answer so what i also want to tell you that if you just give me a problem in probability to solve with almost certainty i can tell you that there is high chance i may flunk so it's 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 a really really unintuitive idea really really need to you know uh, think deep pretty deeply about how, what are your events unless things are very very simple like tossing a coin and there are also a lot of things coming a lot of issues come in there also but it is truly has an un, unintuitive uncanny sense and that is why you know mathematicians get into many many issues with this so we'll not prolong this discussion further so we have the statistician's view and in the next coming up things we will first have the probabilist view who are mathematicians specializing in probability theory and that i'll read from nedenko and kichin kinchin kinchin this beautiful book the elementary introduction to the theory of probability and then i will go and talk about a mathematician who is not a probabilist a pure analyst who think about probability theory 
So uh, with this, I uh, ask, uh, we, I just take a leave and uh, wishing you a very warm and nice day. And I hope it, 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 it would rain outside here in Kanpur. And there was a little prediction. I hope this time the prediction comes right. Okay. So it's all about chance governing our lives, governing our, our, our everything. It, it's a chance driven world. And I strongly, uh, you know, have come to believe in the very famous statement of James Clerk Maxwell for the, of the famous Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics is that the true logic of the world lies in the calculus of probabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much for patiently listening to this average mathematician.